is owned by Al Hubbard of Rentham. He runs it outdoors on a track at his house. It is, uh, this one's a B&M, but it's very similar to the locomotives that we had on the Rentham branch. Uh, all kinds of specifications. This particular model was scrapped in 1922, but it is all hand built. It is a live steamer, develops its own power, and will pull a man around the track. Now, over here on the back wall, we have a panel devoted to another type of railway, the street railway, which came through Plainville, uh, actually connected with almost any other place in the area. Yeah, the tracks were on the west side of South Street. They ran up to Rentham. They went through Creek Street. And I think through the center of Rentham, they went to North Attleboro. You could go to Attleboro. You could go to Pawtucket. You could go to Providence on the streetcars. And we have several. I think that this picture perhaps is very interesting because this building was run by the Crotty family as the waiting room for the trolleys. It was roughly between the park entrance and the town offices. And when the Grand Army Hall had burned on the opposite side of South Street, it was moved across and became the Beehive which some people today still remember, uh, still run by the Crotty family. But at that time, at the time pictured here, which is probably before World War I, it was on the west side of South Street. The others are cars that passed through Plainville at one time or another, the open cars and scenes of where the tracks show in town and whatnot sign from the railroad. It uh, probably came off the depot when it was torn down and the railroad put it on posts at the side of the tracks for the benefit of the freight trains which came through here. The station, had, the stop had to be marked by its name. Stan Myers kept after the New Haven Railroad all through the years to be sure that he would get this sign when they were through with it. And finally, after the tracks came out, he was allowed to go over and get the sign, and it has passed to the Historical Commission, and we're so grateful to have it. To have two types of transportation without adding some others, and these various things here concern the town people or the town uh, from the seven-masted Thomas Lawson schooner, which was captained by Captain Arthur Crowley, who retired to Plainville, through the fire department apparatus from the time it was horse-drawn, through chain-driven trucks, um, the early school barge with its horses, the uh, uh, carriage shop on Plainville Pond about where Bo Peep is now, the Plainville coal trucks over in the um, roundhouse yard, all of these things are connected with our town. It's put on display by Bruce Bumpus. We're so grateful to him for the colorful pictures of locomotives, books about railroading, the lantern, the control from a bud car, I believe now, but most particularly the spikes and the plate from the Rentham branch, which Bruce himself picked up near Cross Street. We're very grateful for the loan of all these things. Pulling its cars loaded with coal, and it's passing by, at this point, the Plainville Roundhouse with its water tower and its turntable spur track, as Wally Peckham said, to Rhines's coal yard long before Attleboro and Plainville with a little bit of the back pond showing here. This is, is a scale model of what we had here in Plainville. We don't count the turnaround because that's one of the logistics of model railroading. On This is West Bacon Street and the West Bacon Street Bridge so authentically rendered that it just looks, everything is so natural to those of us who grew up with this. And the Plainville Depot is here on the north side of the bridge. And so many of us learned to drive in the depot yard. 
down to the freight shed and around, and there used to be a sort of a flower bed that we ran around here. We learned to park in the, against the platform. And up here we have the freight shed. Uh, these things are scale models built by Alan Bleak and Brian Ricard, and the whole layout is greatly assisted by Greg Pion. We are absolutely thrilled with this scale model of what some of us knew in Plainville when we were young. Plainville at one time had 25 passenger trains a day. I think that's a wonderful thing to know and sort of sad to know that we don't have that or even the option of it anymore. And had a connection through Adamsdale to Providence. So it was her. No, no, it was a branch. A branch. I don't understand. Uh, a, this is a spur. A dead end. This is a spur that comes out to service a particular business. Uh -huh. Okay? Yeah. And the branch is a connecting line. From one end to the other. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of some substance, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This collection is from Alan Bleak of North Attleboro, who has collected railroadiana for many years and brought us a collection of railroad stock and pictures of locomotives, such as may have served on this branch, and depots, just a, a very lovely collection of uh, accurate pictures and photographs of the locomotives. the family zoo or my personal rogues gallery. It starts in Vermont with my great grandfather and three of his brothers who served on the old colony as either trainmen, brakemen, conductors. And it goes to my grandfather Bert Prance, who's pictured here various ages and conditions, who became an engineer at a very early age. He came down from Vermont in uh, 1889, and by 1892, he was already an engineer. And then we moved to my father, George W. Prance, who is vivid in the memory of many of us today, and many of his little memorabilia things, both connection to the town and to the railroad, um, as he's pictured here with my mother receiving an award, some things that happened in his lifetime. And this is why I refer to it as a personal rogues gallery. <laughs> Here are loaned by various town people, Nettie Whiting Dunabier, a picture of Sam Hamlin, her great-grandfather, who was an engineer on wood burners from Boston to Providence, who retired in 1873. I think it's just wonderful to have that kind of a record. Her aunt, Isabella Hamblin, who was telegrapher in North Alabama for about 50 years. And Fred Crockett, who was a fireman for Bert Prance and then engineer for George Prance when he was a fireman. And uh, Fred Crockett lived at 99 West Bacon Street. Um, these things on the middle shelf are loaned by Lois Swallow, her father Earl on the depot platform when he was a little fellow. Al Swallow, her grandfather's lantern. Earl was, um, Al was a baggage master and a conductor on the Rentham branch. This is a picture of when President Taft came to the Attleboro Depot and friends of Al Swallow's in their railroad uniforms. The bottom shelf was loaned by Mildred Evans and her daughter, Lois Evans Rice. Uh, they concern Raymond Ashley Pollitt, who was a station agent in Plainville when he was about 18 years old. This was his telegraph key and his railroad signal land, and he went on to become the chief train dispatcher at the Union Station in Providence, which job he served in until he retired. 
blown by Mrs. Clayton Tate, but all of the rolling stock in it belonged to Greg Pion, who has assisted greatly in this exhibit, and every bit of it is hand painted. I think that is fantastic when you look at the detail on these various cars and locomotives. Is part of the collection, a very small part of the collection of the late Clayton Kate. It has been loaned by his widow, B. Kate. I love the fact that he considered himself a feral equinologist, and you really need to have studied Latin to know that this means student of the iron horse. And Clayton certainly was that. He had a model railroad in his basement to really outdistance most model railroads. And we have just a few of the buildings from that layout and a few of the locomotives from it, a picture or two, his railroad cap, uh, and his train board, which I think is a masterpiece. He was great at building stuff like this. He even made stock for his railroad. Amazing. Uh, just here, we have a collection that was loaned by Bob Allsworth of Rentham, which came from the late Charlie Ennis. And Bob Allsworth collects ephemera, and he said when he gets a lovely bit of material like this, he keeps it and enjoys it. It's buttons of railroads. It's a B of LE badge from Old Colony Division 312. It's a conductor's purse. It's straps for the train freight crew's legs to keep their overalls from flapping and getting caught. It's uh, symbols of the various railroad lines. We call this along the line to our north and south. The top part of the bulletin board down to about here deals with North Attleboro. This was the North Attleboro Depot on the Rentham Branch. Some early newspaper clippings. This was the depot the old colony depot down where Cumberland Farms is now in North Attleboro and the Attleboro Sun Chronicle office. This is off Broadway when they burned the railroad, the freight shed in 1968. Then these others concern Rentham, two Wampum Corner stations, an article about it, um, a, a place that's very much up for grabs, we're not sure about. And this is an old, old view of Kendrick Street in Rentham, but looking down to the depot, Winter Brothers is on the left. The piece de resistance, you might say, the, the thing that got us started. This is Plainville about 100 years ago. Fox Market is readily recognizable, and uh, you might call it Jerry's Barbershop, but I call it Peckham's Bakery. It's the day of the trolley car. It's the day of the bicycle, and I think it's a lovely picture. And from there, we have the Plainville Depot, the Plainville Roundhouse. Stored in the Plainville Roundhouse at one time was the first passenger coach ever used on the Boston Province Railroad in 1834. Eventually it went to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor and here it is when it was boarded up, here it is when it was open with somebody sitting in it all in the Plainville Roundhouse. This engine is the Daniel Nason pictured elsewhere but here stored again in the Plainville Roundhouse. This shows pretty well the turntable as it comes out of the round, front of the roundhouse. And this is looking from under the railroad bridge north past the Plainville Depot and the Plainville Freight Shed. We have timetables. We have pictures of, of locomotives on the branch, um, the Green Street Bridge, uh, a wreck in front of our freight shed in uh, 1912. And when they took out the West Bacon Street Bridge with a sorted article, we welcome you to the Humphrey House at 136 South Street, Plainville, the home of the Plainville Historical Commission during the occasion of our Railway Days in Plainville exhibit. I'm Barbara Fluke, chairman of the commission. Brian Ricard has been the chairman of the exhibit. We're starting here at our big old desk, which was always in the Plainville Library and we inherited, because it has upon it the log that was in the Plainville Depot, which was signed
by the conductor of each train with the name of the conductor, the name of the engineer, all kinds of information, date, time, engine number, train number, number of cars on that train, and those things were all, this log begins in 1908 and goes on for about three years. We were very fortunate to be, uh, to be loaned this. We were very fortunate to have been loaned this book from the old Fireburn Museum in Albert Falls by the curator, George Cunningham. George told me that he went to the Plainville Depot when they were about to tear it down, and for one dollar, he bought a huge burlap bag full of paper goods that were left in the depot. And this is the treasure of all treasures. We are more than thrilled to have it at our exhibit today. We do have um, a, a number of pictures from private collections that are on our walls in this exhibit. And this one happens to be from my father's collection. It was taken by a professional photographer in New Bedford named Gus Mayo, who had Daddy doing all kinds of tricks with this engine till he got the black smoke to go in the direction he wanted it to so it didn't obscure the, the engine itself. And uh, I remember very well the complaints that came through about how many times they had to jockey that engine around to take this picture. But it is a, a good one and representative of several that are here in the building today.
back and over to you. <laughs> yeah, he's going to give me a thrill. trying to picture where we were looking across from. It's right this side of that little white one. Open field there. <laughs> Spring Street wasn't in yet. Do you know who the artist is? Barbara would. She knows all that. It's too bad. Is it, a, is it an ENT? Yes, it's an ENT. Yeah. You can call her or uh, come back and you make an appointment and see her, talk to her.
<laughs> when we when we dismount this, we're going to be sure that
they went home, they got them down to one that didn't put up here, put up at Child Street. I wanted to take the main line. Extra revenue on the books. I didn't want any extra revenue on this line when they went up to this Gazelle.
very delicate stuff you have to put on. Yeah, I don't want to take a picture of my face, I'm sure. Very good. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I remember when they see the old gas comes down the town and walk and start to Thank you. 
can say, I want a different engine on the track. Uh, let me do that right now. All righty. Tight radius for that locomotive, too. Yeah. You're doing well so far, though. And that switch, I too. Oh, shit! I want to see you. What's that big chain doing? Well, that looks like it's an 1992, site of the former Roundhouse Engine House off West Bacon Street in Plainville, currently owned by Attleboro Plainville Oil Company, used for storage.
obviously there was four bays, or four engines. An outbuilding that probably, obviously housed the boiler and for the machinery, steam boiler I'm sure, for the machinery <coughs> used in the roundhouse. At the site, even though the turntable itself is not visible, <coughs> 